G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. This is the final video where we will be dual booting Linux Mint 20.2 in legacy mode with Windows 10. We are at the boot screen of, of Linux Mint and as you can see it's a lot different to the um, UEFI screen. We have a few options there. Memory test, boot from local drive, hardware detection, integrity check, OEM install, start in compatibility mode, and start Linux Mint, which is what we're going to do. And here we are in the live desktop of Linux Mint. So we're going to be using the installer first. So let's get on with that. English is my language. You can choose your language here. Let's continue. My keyboard layout is English US. Install the multimedia codecs, which should give you all, most, if not all, codec support. And like I said in my previous uh, video of Linux Mint uh, 20.2 UEFI install, uh, the install multimedia codecs, uh, they, they give you the option of clicking that install in case for legal reasons in your country it's not allowed. So that's the reason why they do that. Linux Mint multimedia codecs, which is the, the Mint-Meta-Codex, installs... Most, if not all, codecs needed. I think even possibly for your CD, DVD, ROMs as well. I'd want to hope. So let's continue. And like I've said all along in this series, if you install Linux Mint alongside Windows 10 and you choose that option, they will be more than likely sharing the same boot partition. Um, when it comes to legacy, oh, that's a bit of a grey area. I don't know, because I know that uh, Windows 10 looks like it uh, uses a separate boot manager anyway and I'm not really sure whether it's installed into the uh, master boot record at SDA or not. Most of the time I don't have too much trouble in legacy mode. So we don't want to choose that option. We can erase disk and install Linux Mint which will erase all data on the disk, will delete your current Windows install and install Linux Mint onto the whole disk. But we don't want to do that we want to do something else let's continue so just like the previous installs of legacy uh, we need to make sure that these are logical partitions don't believe we need to make it an extended because the installer should allow us to use logical partitions so we have one two three partitions there already we need another three so that's more than four primary partitions cannot have more than four primaries in MS-DOS mode, which is legacy mode. So we need to make these all logical partitions. So that's, we can click on the plus button or we can double click. So I'm going to make that a far, um, so we don't need a boot partition in this case. So we're going to make our 4,096 megabyte partition, which is exactly four gig. It's gonna be a logical partition beginning of this space it will be a swap area and click OK so right from the word go in the installer we can set it as logical we don't have to create an extended because it'll do that automatically that's why that number goes from three one two three the extended partition is hidden that will be SDA 4 so that's why that jumps up to five and I think we've seen that in the Lubuntu install, I think Calamari shows you that the extended partition is SDA4. Within the Ubiquity installer, even though it's the Linux Mint installer, it's still Ubiquity that belongs to Ubuntu. It doesn't show you that extended partition. So if you're a bit confused as to why it jumps from three to five, um, that's why, because that's a branch off the extended partition. So let's click the free space again. It'll be 20,480 megabytes, which will be exactly 20 gig partition. It's gonna be logical. It's gonna be ext4 and the mount point will be root and click okay. And the free space once again, we shall use the remaining space, logical partition ext4 and that's going to be forward slash home. Click okay. So in here, we've got a good example of SDA. So what we've got here is SDA1 is the Windows Boot Manager, I believe, or would it be, 
should normally be FAT32, but I think that's the Windows Boot Manager. So we're going to be choosing SDA. Now, if you installed alongside Windows 10, it, it would probably put the Linux Mint install or boot within here. That's why we need to select SDA. So I believe they are still separated boot partitions, I believe. It's a bit of a gray area for, for the legacy install, I must say, but uh, anyway, that's the way it is. So we've got SDA5, which is our swap. So SDA6 is where we're going to be installing Linux Mint. And SDA7 is our home, which is the dark blue one here. Device for bootloader is device SDA, and we can install now. And it gives us a rundown of the changes we've made to the partition. And let's click continue, because I'm happy with that. Australia Perth is my location, my real name. Um, mint sin uh, we'll do alpha legacy dash vm because i didn't put anything in the previous one for uefi so that can be alpha legacy colon is my username it's got to be all lowercase and it gives you the option here to encrypt the home folder i didn't see that in the uefi one actually i missed that one but yes you've got an option to encrypt home folder i'm not going to do that option to log in automatically let's continue And that is the installation complete. That's restart, make sure we have a working boot menu. And here we have our boot menu, Linux Mint and Windows 10. And advanced options for Linux Mint there as well. So that's boot Linux Mint. And there's our login screen for Linux Mint. Let's log into that. And we always get our check your video drivers up there for Linux Mint because of some advanced driver acceleration driver or something. And there's our Linux Mint welcome screen. And let's restart Linux Mint and make sure that Windows 10 boots successfully. Windows 10. And there's our Windows 10 boot screen. Let's log in. And there's another successful boot, this time a dual boot with Linux Mint and Windows 10 in legacy mode. And let's shut that down. And the last install of this series will be to 
Prepare the partitions with Gparted in a live desktop of Linux Mint 20.2. So let's do that. And we are in the live desktop of Linux Mint legacy mode. Let's open up Gparted and prepare the partitions within Gparted. So what we have here is we have our unallocated space here. I don't know why this mouse continues to spin. <laughs> It did the same thing with UEFI, so I don't know what that's all about. So we can go partition and new, or we can right click and new. So what we need to do here is, uh, if we have a look at uh, view part device information, we are on MS-DOS. I don't think we viewed the device information in UEFI, but that would have been GPT anyway. So we need to make a new partition and we're going to be using all of the space and create an extended partition. And if you've been watching the series, you'll already know the reason for that. Otherwise, if you haven't, let's cancel that. You cannot have more than four primary partitions in legacy mode with an MS-DOS partition table. So we've got one, two, three partitions for Windows already. We need to create another three for Linux, Linux Mint. That means that'll be six partitions. You cannot have more than four. So we need to create an extended partition. So let's do that. Right click and new. Use the whole space and set that whole space as an extended partition. Click add. Now, as you can see, that's got new partition one. Now, if we don't apply that, we can continue with our logical partitions on this extended, but I'm going to apply that and see what that comes up as, because I think that'll come up as SDA4, which it does. And in the installer, you don't see that the extended partition is SDA4. It doesn't show you that, not in, in the first install anyway. So now we've got this unallocated space here, which is all gonna be logical partitions. So we can click on that and click partition and new. There's no boot partition in this, so we're going to create a 4096 megabyte partition, enter that, which will be a four gig partition exactly. Uh, you cannot name the partition because it's not a partition, it's a logical partition, so it doesn't allow you to put any name in there. But this is going to be Linux swap, and we can put a label as swap and add that. So there's our new partition one. Right click and new. We'll make our 20,480. We'll make our 20,480 megabyte partition, which is exactly 20 gigs. Create it as a logical partition. It'll be an ext4 file system. Got these other choices here. I'm going with ext4, and we'll label that as root. Add that, and then the last one, partition and new. We'll use the remaining space. It's a logical partition. It'll be ext4 once again. We'll label that as home. Add that. And there's our new partitions created. And as you can see there, Windows has its own boot partition there, which is SDA1, and it's got the flag there as boot in SDA1. We probably could put a boot flag on our root partition there. That's a gray area for me as well, because I think whether you put it or not, um, it'll, it should know that uh, you're putting the boot um, on the master boot record of SDA anyway. But that tells me, this SDA one tells me that putting Linux on the master boot record is separated in legacy mode from Windows boot. That's probably why I've never had any issues in legacy mode, especially on my HP. So we're going to apply that and apply that. All operations completed successfully. And there we have our SDA5, SDA6 and SDA7. Write them down just in case you have to remember what they are come installation time. Now on the root partition, we could go to manage flags and put boot on there. You can do that. I don't think I will. I'll leave that. I think we will get the same result anyway. Don't forget 
I forgot to tell you at the start of that. Make sure you're choosing the disc that you're working with. This shows how many physical discs you have. So let's just say you've got three or four physical discs. Uh, you can choose the one you want to work with. And that's the partitions created in Gparted. Let's now start the installer. English for me, choose your language here. Continue. My keyboard will be English US. Continue. We shall install the multimedia codex, which is the mint-meta-codex, which installs most, if not all, codecs needed, possibly including CD and DVD-ROM um, codex as well, I believe. Continue that. Now we could choose to install Linux Mint alongside Windows 10. And as I've said all along in this series, if you do that, you're probably sharing the same boot manager as Windows 10. We can erase disk and install Linux Mint, which will erase all data off the disk and even delete your current Windows 10 installation and we'll install Linux Mint to the whole disk. What we're going to do, as we've done throughout this series, is choose something else. Continue that. And it's um, reading our current partitions up the top here. Um, SDA5 is our Linux swap. SDA6 is EXT4, which will be where Linux Mint is installed to. SDA7 is this dark blue one, which is where our home partition will be. So let's do that. So what we can do now is we can double click that partition or you can choose change. Uh, with the swap partition, there's no need to do anything with that. Double click SDA6, that's our root partition. So we're going to make that EXT4. And because it's um, a new partition, I'm gonna format it. I don't think it's necessary because we formatted it in Gparted, but I like to, to format within the installer. And our mount point will be root and OK. Then we can double click or click on change our SDA7. We'll choose EXT4, we'll format that as well. Now, like I've said in, in the series, we're going to select that as forward slash home. If you, have, if you have current data on your forward slash home, which is why I do the, the partition creation in Gparted, is because it shows you how you have these different selections within the installer. So if you had a current install, it'll be exactly how you installed it the first time. So if you want, if you if you just want to reinstall the next version of Linux Mint into root, you can do that, and you can leave this select your forward slash home. Do not format it because all your documents and downloads and music and everything will remain within those respective folders, and you don't have to format that. But because this is a brand new uh, partition creation, I'm going to format it and forward slash home. Click OK. And now, like I've said, uh, we have a boot partition for Windows 10 here, SDA1. And if you if you install, if you choose to install alongside, it'll be sharing that bootloader, I'm sure. Um, we don't want to do that. That we want to keep them separate. So we're going to choose the, the device for bootloader installation will be the default dev SDA, which is at the start of the disk in the master boot record. So I believe these two are naturally separated in legacy mode. I'm starting to believe that now after doing all these videos. <laughs> We've made our choice for boot device for bootloader installation as DevSDA. Let's click install now. And it will show us what we've done with the um, partitions there. I'm happy with that. And let's continue. And Australia Perth is my location. Put my real name. Computer's name, um, Colin Mint Cinnamon Legacy VM. Long-winded names. <laughs> uh, my username is always Colin and my password. Hit the tab key for the next box. You can choose to log in automatically. I would prefer a login screen. Uh, yes, which is require my password to log in. And you can encrypt your home folder. I'm not going to do that. Let's click continue. And that is the install complete using Gparted to prepare the partitions and install Linux Mint 20.2 dual booting with Windows 10. So let's restart now and make sure that um, 
everything has been done successfully. And there's our boot manager there. So I didn't put a I didn't put a boot flag on that um, root partition. So I don't think it's necessary in the installer. So we'll boot Linux Mint. And there's our login screen for Linux Mint. And there's our Linux Mint welcome screen. Let's close that. That's a successful boot. Linux Mint uh, legacy prepared with Gparted. So let's restart that and check our Windows is booting fine. Windows 10. And there's our login screen for Windows 10. Let's log in. And that is our final login to Windows 10 dual booting with Linux. In this case, last video, Linux Mint Cinnamon Legacy Mode. So I'm pretty sure we've been very successful in all these videos here, dual booting Linux distros with Windows 10. So let's shut that down. And that concludes our installation of Linux Mint dual booting with Windows 10 in Legacy Mode. And that concludes the series of dual booting with Linux and Windows 10. Now, some of you might have found that uh, these videos were quite repetitive, possibly even boring. <laughs> there is a reason why I do this. Ubuntu uses the GNOME desktop. Lubuntu uses Qt, which is very lightweight and can be used on low spec hardware. Ubuntu uses GNOME, so that's a lot heavier. I'm not sure if you'd classify GNOME heavier than Cinnamon. I'm not sure, but I have used Cinnamon on some low spec computers and it seems to cope okay. Now, the latest Ubuntu's I'm not sure about, but also I think um, I try to keep my two feet on the ground really and realize that around the world we have fortunate countries and not so fortunate countries. And sometimes these things are brought to your attention, especially um, the developer of Pac OS. Uh, he's trying to develop a distro for people in Pakistan who can't afford um, Windows or, or even not even if sometimes it doesn't come down to affording Windows. Um, it's also the hardware suitability. You can't afford Windows, you can't afford new hardware, and you can't afford to to continue to run Windows on your current hardware because it probably doesn't suit it anymore. With Windows 10, um, it can get bogged down. With, with uh, low spec hardware, that can be the case. And even with some hardware that started off suitable, may not be that suitable anymore as updates continue. So it is important that people have an option to be able to try something else and also keep the security of what they currently know so they can go back into that install if there's something that's not working within Linux because they don't fully understand it. So it's like a security blanket really at the end of the day. So even if these videos as probably boring and as mundane as they probably could have got, even if it is helping one person at least, um, then they've done their job. And I, th I just thought those three distros were the best to choose. And what was interesting to me is to learn about the fact that I went through a phase, I think I, I'm not sure if I spoke about that in the series or not, but I went through the phase where I was installing the bootloader to the same root partition that Linux was installed to. That's in legacy mode. And it's taken me these videos to realize that Windows does make its own partition. Now, I don't know if it's using the master boot record in that partition or not, but if it's not, then definitely installing the bootloader to SDA is keeping them separated anyway. When EFI was introduced um, at some point and I couldn't figure out how to <laughs> install Ubuntu because it was missing and it wasn't booting and it was completely gone after install and I was doing what I was normally doing, I think my creation of uh, partitions got clouded um, with doing separate boots for EFI. And that was the best way to keep um, EFI boot partitions uh, clean for Windows and Linux is to keep them separated. And I think I got these ideas in my head on how to do that in legacy, but it, it's not, it wasn't the case. I think just installing the SDA I think naturally they are separated because Windows has its own boot manager. So that was interesting for me to learn that as this series uh, went along. I think you forget or things get confused 
um, when something new was introduced to what you already know and over the years you just focus on EFI and then all of a sudden you start going back to legacy uh, because someone gives you a legacy computer to work with and you haven't worked with it for a while and you're thinking, oh, I'll keep those boots separated um, and I'll do what I do in EFI, but it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> so always thinking, but sometimes not the correct way. Anyway, that concludes my Linux and Windows 10 dual boot series. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the series. Hope you found it all interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.